It's early in the season and you're so proud because you've got to jump on things, you've got your seedlings planted, germinated, and you're already Instagramming your success. You're anticipating this is going to be the best garden year ever. But then... Dreams dashed again. No worries though, because in this video, I'm going over the three biggest mistakes that you might be making, what problems those mistakes might be causing you, and how to prevent or fix them. Coming up. Hey everyone, I'm Brian with California Garden TV, and if you're looking to join a gardening community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you grow your own organic fruits and vegetables and become a little more self-sufficient along the way, you're in the right place. Get started right now by clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get growing. So I've had a ton of comments and questions about this very issue. Had your seedlings started and they germinated, but then within a week or two, everything went south. So I know a lot of you have this problem. Tammy actually had this problem. Um, I've been coaching her from a distance, same as you. And I even had one of these problems as well. So nobody's immune, but there are certain things that you can do uh, in advance to prevent or fix them once they've happened. So whether you are it's warm enough and you're starting your seedlings outdoors now, um, maybe some of the heat lovers, or you're still in a colder climate and you're still starting your seeds indoors, this information is gonna come in handy. Now, I'm not gonna go over germination issues because that's seldom a problem. You know, as long as you don't plant really, really deep, most seeds are very forgiving in terms of depth of, of planting, and just keep the seed moist at all times from the top of the soil all the way down through. Um, it needs that, that um, moisture to crack that seed open and, and begin. Uh, one more thing on germination, if you are starting heat lovers like peppers and having a problem, or uh, like Armenian cucumbers or some melons, you will have a problem with germination. It's probably gonna be because it's too cool yet, because they are heat lovers, and you can remedy that by getting a seed heat mat. About 11, 13 bucks, I don't know, I'll put a link down below, um, and that will solve that problem. Okay, so enough about germination. Uh, we're talking now when your seedlings are germinated and everything looks good, and then all of a sudden something happens. So, the first reason that might be happening is the lighting. Now, a lot of people think, uh, I used to think the same thing, if you have a south-facing window, then you could put your seedlings seeds right there, seedlings, um, and there's going to be enough sun there to... To grow them until they're ready to go outside now for some south facing windows this may be true uh, none of mine and i think it's probably going to be a lot of times not true your seedlings need six hours at least of direct sunlight that means the sun is hitting them without any kind of um, barrier or filtered shade or anything. Six hours of direct sunlight is what your seedlings need to grow strong. Now, if there isn't enough light, you're gonna notice your seedlings stretch real tall, long stem, tiny little leaves on top. And that's what's called getting leggy. And the problem with that is they're using all their energy to get toward the light. And now they've expended all their energy. They're top heavy, tiny little stems. If they start to grow on top at all, they're gonna get top heavy and just flop over and die. And there's hardly any way to really remedy that once it's happened. Tomatoes are one uh, that you can usually because you can just bury the stem a little bit further up. Most, most fruits and vegetables, you can't do that. So what if you don't have that sunny window and it's too cold to put them outside in direct sun? That's where you're gonna need a grow light. Now I did a video um, with Tammy, part of our new garden series. I'll put a link down below to that where I walk you through a couple of setups. Um, you do not have to get a grow light. You certainly don't need a grow light like in my last video. That's not for seedlings. It will work, but it's overkill. Um, you can use a uh, the, the screwy in type bulbs, the, the spiral, what are they called? CFLs. 
um, or you can use long tubes like in a shop light, LED, um, I, I think are a little bit better. Basically, you're looking for two different numbers. The number, number one is the lumens, and all boxes will say this. It does not have to say grow light. So when you're looking, um, I will put some down below, the ones that I use, but uh, you're looking for 1,500 to 3,000 lumens. Lumens is the intensity of the light, how bright that light is. And so that's a very important number, 1,500 to 3,000. Now the second number you're looking for on the box is Kelvin, and that is the temperature of the light, the color of the light. And you want that anywhere between 4,500 and 6,500 Kelvin. Now, as long as you have those two numbers in that range, the Kelvin and the lumens, it doesn't matter what type of bulb, as long as those numbers are on the box, on the packaging, you're good. But because it's not a strong light, like the one I did in the previous video, um, you're gonna need to make sure that you keep the top of the leaves about two inches or less from that light bulb. And that means either raising the light as the plants grow, or if you're dealing with all different heights of seedlings, um, you're gonna wanna bring some of them up to the light, the shorter ones up to the light by putting a brick or a piece of wood or a book or something underneath those. So they're all right there at the exact level, one to two inches from that light bulb. Okay, so have you done all that and you're still having problems? All right. We want to make sure the second thing is that you have the right type of soil that you're growing in, the right uh, seed starting medium. You definitely do not want to use garden soil and you definitely don't want to use compost, um, homemade compost. The reason is, is because both of those have pathogens, bacteria, weed seeds, all kinds of stuff that are going to interfere with the sterile environment that your seedlings need to um, to grow well and to not die basically so you want to start with either a seed starting mix that's specifically for that you can also use an indoor potting mix or you can make your own like I do and a simple recipe is two parts peat moss uh, sustainable peat moss or cocoa core and one part perlite mix that up pre moisten it and that's a very good sterile, well-draining, but moisture holding um, potting mix or seed starting mix that you can do homemade. Okay, both those steps, good. If you've got both those steps taken care of and you're still having issues, it comes down to number three and it's probably 80 to 90% of the time this problem. And that is either over or under watering. Most of the time it's over watering. A lot of times you'll go and look at your seedlings and this was Tammy's problem. The top will look dry and so you'll water it. And then the top will look dry by the end of the day and you'll water it again. Now that's fine before the seeds come up because the seed is very shallow and it needs to stay moist all the time. But as soon as the seed has its first two little seed leaves, you don't need to keep it that wet. The first thing a seed does, even before you see anything on the top, is it's developing a tap root. It sends a root straight down and then roots grow off of that. So the seed is getting its water from beneath the, 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 la the top layer of the soil. And so it's okay, in fact, it's a good thing that you let the top dry out. Too much moisture, too much humidity can cause fungus, bacteria, even algae to grow on top of the soil. In fact, Tammy sent me her first picture and the soil was covered in algae. You definitely don't want that. So the main way to get rid of that is to not water so much. And what you can do is, you, it's hard to look at the top because it, it does dry out very quickly. You can water it in the morning and by the afternoon, depending on the situation in your growing area, it can be dry, but that does not mean that just a centimeter under the top of that um, soil top layer is still wet. Now it's hard to stick your finger down in depending on the size of your container. If you can, do that. Um, one sign that you will notice when it's time to water is that the, um, the, the potting mix will start to pull away from the sides of the container. That's a, that's a good indication that it's time to water. You can also lift up the, the uh, container and if it feels heavy, 
that's probably got enough water. If it feels really light, then you need to water. Now, obviously, if the plants are wilting, you need to water. Now, the best way by far to water seedlings is not with a squirt bottle. That is doable, especially in super dry conditions. The best way is to take a tray and fill it halfway with water and set your seedling uh, container into that and let the water soak up from the bottom until you start to see the top uh, is moist. Take it off and then don't water again until you need it, until it absolutely needs it and you've done one of the previous things to test and make sure of that. Uh, another really good tip for seedlings is to get a fan. It could be a small little fan, like a desktop fan, and just put it over the area that you uh, have your seedlings in, and that's gonna kinda keep the air moving. It will keep the, the top of the soil dry. It will also strengthen the stems of the seeds, because, or the seedlings, because they're gonna kind of be moving with the wind, with the breeze the fan is making, and that's gonna strengthen their stems. Now, overwatering, like I said, when you get algae, you're really far into this whole overwatering thing, and there's gonna be a lot of fungus and a lot of bacteria growing on the surface of the soil, and that leads to something called damping off. And that is when seemingly overnight, your seedlings go from looking completely healthy to kind of have a shriveled up stem and they've fallen over. The leaves might even still look okay for a few hours, but that stem has just kind of dried up and fallen over. Damping off is caused by, by fungus and bacteria. Now there's a couple things you can do uh, to prevent damping off. One is the fan on 24 hours to keep the top of that soil a little bit more dry. Um, secondly, right after you sow the seeds and then water them, take cinnamon, ground cinnamon, and use the shaker and just shake it over the soil. And that's gonna make a little layer uh, of cinnamon on top. And what that does is it's kind of like an antifungal. It doesn't necessarily kill the fungus, but it creates an environment where it's hard for it to grow. You can also use neem oil. A teaspoon of neem oil in a little bottle like this. This is 32 ounces. A teaspoon of neem oil, a couple drops of dish soap, fill the rest with water, shake it up, and then spray this onto your, uh, your seed bed. You can give it a little spray every week until the seedlings develop their first true leaves. Then you're getting a little bit past the point of the damping off, but keep an eye on it, obviously. Now, when you do have a humid environment, you're also going to get probably something called fungus gnats. Tiny little bugs that you're going to see flying around your seedlings. And um, the problem with those are not so much the gnat, but their larvae. They lay eggs in the soil. And when the larvae hatch out, they eat the roots of your seedlings. And seedlings don't have that many roots, so it doesn't take that much for the plant to die. The neem oil spray is going to be good for that as well, as well as the little, um, you know, the, the, the fly paper. It's like yellow sticky cards that you can hang up places. Put a couple of those where your seedlings are, and that's going to attract the fungus gnats and stick them to it. Now, underwatering really only leads to one outcome, and that is death. In fact, I did it myself. These are my peppers. It's always the peppers. And if you can see, some of them still look okay. We've got lots here that have just dried up and fallen over. Um, when I found these, it, they were as light as a feather, literally no moisture. I don't know what happened, but I, I must not have uh, watered them when I watered everything else, must have missed them. And then by the time I was ready to water everything else, I noticed, whoa, half of them are dead. So the last problem people have usually when starting seedlings is too small of a container or starting too soon. You really only need to start your seedlings indoors four to six weeks before your last frost date. Now, I'll put a link below to find out your last frost date. If you start sooner than that though, um, you're just increasing the amount of time that your seedling has to be in indoors and in a, in a confined container. Anything past four to six inches tall of a seedling, after that point, you're starting to put it at a disadvantage. If you take some, a seedling grown indoors that's maybe four to five inches tall, four to six inches, 
and you have another one of the same plant that's maybe eight to 10 to 12 inches, you put them both out in the garden, the smaller one is going to outperform the bigger one almost every time because its, its roots are not completely packed into a small space. It hasn't gotten so used to being inside that it doesn't know what to do when it goes outside. So four to six weeks, no more. Um, and actually there's some vegetables that don't even like to be transplanted and don't even need to be started indoors soon because they grow so fast. Beans do not like to be transplanted and they grow fast. So after your last frost date, plant them directly into the ground, in, in, into the garden. Um, melons, like watermelon, cantaloupe, those are heat lovers and you don't need to start those indoors. They grow pretty fast. Squash is another one. Zucchinis, yellow squash, they grow super fast. So just plant them outside after your last frost date and that's probably the best way to do that. Um, things like okra, peppers, I still start my peppers indoors on the heat mats, um, but I do move them out as soon as the nights warm up into like the 50s. Because again, as soon as you can get them into the garden, the better they're going to do. So I hope this information was helpful. If you learned at least one thing, can you give the video a thumbs up? I would really appreciate it. Um, if you've had some of these problems and maybe you found other fixes, there's a million out there, I'm sure, and we'd all love to hear about them. So please share that down in the comments. Um, as always, please subscribe if you haven't already. We're a great community here. We're always, you know, I, I love looking down in the comments and I'm not able to, to get to all the comments now. I do see them all and I do read them all and I give them a heart. I'm not able at this point to answer every single one, but what's great is, this is now what I've always wanted. It's a community and uh, other gardeners are answering each other's questions. So it's just a great, a great thing to be a part of. So subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will see you on Self-Sufficient Sunday.